Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Raffle Duke Page Guy channel. It is I, Raffle Duke, back here once again to do a video. As the title will state, I will be sort of giving my official thoughts and, uh, you know, how I felt about this recent time in pro wrestling with the MT Arena crowd since, you know, I, I've been trying to do my videos more focused on reviewing the story, the matches, etc., and not just, you know, there's certain elements where the crowd was missed, so I'm gonna get into that just really quick. Gonna cover two things. Uh, first of all, I want to send my thoughts and prayers out to uh, Shad Gaspard's family. We all heard the news yesterday of uh, Shad uh, passing away. And, well, passing away is hopefully not what happened. Um, you know, you've heard the news, and I just wish that hope that they find Shad and that he's okay. Uh, second off, uh, I want to also send uh, uh, my condolences to uh, Larry Zonka, a writer from 411 Mania. He might not mean a lot to some people, but to me, I would usually read his reviews of events uh, after either watching him or I would read his um, his thoughts and reviews to see, you know, on Ring of Honor, TNA, etc. And... Uh, it sort of became a routine. After every Raw, I would, you know, stay up till his review came out for One One Mania. Then I would read it, you know, see what he thought, compare, you know, do do stuff like that. And I found out he passed away yesterday. So my thoughts are out to the Four One One Mania crew and his family. Uh, quickly, also, I want to thank everyone for the incredible reception I've gone on the Becky Lynch pregnancy video. I don't know. Where that, where that came out, and just the fact that I'm up now up to past 300 subscribers is amazing. So thank you so much. Uh, keep subscribing, like I said. I'm considering doing a little bit of different things for my channel, and maybe trying new things, maybe covering new subjects. But this is all, you know, work in progress. Uh, so to the original topic of this video, the uh, empty arena show. So. Considering the situation that we're in now, right now, the COVID-19 pandemic that is hitting uh, the world, uh, wrestling has found a way to keep going in a certain manner. Now, WWE has kept, you know, business going like if it was nothing, such as, you know, taping shows, doing live shows, NXT, uh, they did WrestleMania, they did Money in the Bank, Backlash is coming up, uh, AEW has done live shows they've taped the bulk of they taped a huge bulk of shows and now they're doing live shows again back in jacksonville and it's pretty certain that double or nothing will be taking place in jacksonville at daily's place with the stadium stampede taking place next door is at tia bank field um so the thing that's with these empty arena shows is that it takes out a very important aspect of professional wrestling which is the audience the crowd um, you know, it, it's a time on their tradition in wrestling that you cheer or you boo. You cheer the good guys, you boo the bad guys, etc. And taking the crowd out of that takes out a certain element of, you know, pro wrestling. Sorry, trying to keep hydrated. So, you know, certain matches that could, that sometimes are a little bit more rough or that was a little bit more eh. You know, with the crowd, could maybe put him over the edge. Uh, I mentioned my review of... Um, I mean, I uh, I was going to mention, in my thoughts for Money in the Bank, the Drew and Seth match was really good, but it could have been uh, taken another step if it had a live audience there. Um, now, I can appreciate AEW's uh, thing of having wrestlers in the crowd... For the first part, I didn't really mind it because for the first few weeks, the wrestlers would just be there. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do anything. They would just cheer for who, which side they were on. The heels would cheer the heels. The baby faces would cheer the baby faces, etc. But then they started adding these parts where, like, for example, Britt Baker kept attacking random people with her shoe, and like I get it, you know, she's a wrestler, you know, her interfering, I guess, was natural. But it just kept getting annoying because she would just interfere in random ass matches and hit people with her shoe. And, like, even that part, like, I I praise AEW for doing that. But 
I kept. I wish I just really kept it to wrestlers in the crowd. Have some interview interview time for them, like uh, they did with Tony interviewing like MJF or uh, Sean Spears, etc. But having the wrestlers start interfering in matches, I. If Rip was interfering with someone who she was in a storyline in, which before this whole thing she kind of wasn't. I mean, she had just turned heel. Uh, I think she was in a storyline with Big Swole, but Big Swole's like nowhere to be seen now. So they, uh, they've angled her into this story with Chris Stanlander, which they're going to have a match at Double or Nothing. It sort of makes me... It started to annoy me. It really started to annoy me. And, you know, it's making me miss the live crowds a lot more. Now I've heard, like, they've, um, WWE's in an interesting situation with SummerSlam. Uh, you know, AEW's not so bad because they're, like, uh, quarterly pay-per-views. And their first one is Double or Nothing. Their next one's probably going to be in August in uh, All Out or September, depending. I don't know if they'll do All Out. Then they'll do Full Gear later in the year. Um, but now they're they're going to be missing. They're going to be heading into a pay-per-view they're going to need. Uh, they're going to hang into a quarter where they're going to they're need an event. And uh, AEW, you know, they can plan from afar. And they can plan in advance. Meanwhile, WWE, you know, they're per monthly. Um, no news on uh, Extreme Rules in San Jose. Uh, last I heard, I didn't know if that was canceled or not. I've heard rumors that they just postponed the show to being a TV taping instead. Um... Now, SummerSlam's in deep trouble because the city of Boston wants to cancel all mass gatherings till like, September. And uh, that would kind of affect SummerSlam, considering SummerSlam is in mid-August. Uh, so, there's no news. It, there's rumors saying that WWE would want to keep it in Boston as much as possible. Uh, but if they were to move it, they would move it to Southern Florida, which would probably be Miami. Uh, so the American Airlines Arena, the home of the, of the Miami Heat, maybe uh, the BB&T Center in uh, Fort Lauderdale, the home of the Panthers, or um, maybe Orlando, even though I, you know, they've been in Orlando so much, I think at some point, when live shows start again, they'd be like, you know what, we're going to do shows outside of Florida for a little bit. <laughs> um, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with SummerSlam. Uh, you know, a lot of people were hoping that when this pandemic was going to end, that they was going to book and, you know, make SummerSlam big and huge. And the way it's looking is that this thing, you know, we're heading into June and, uh, there's, you know, this virus stuff. I'm not an expert on this. I don't follow the developments of the virus, uh, or whatnot, but this virus thing is, you know, is starting to lose steam. So, and especially with the heat that's coming out, you know, it's getting warm in a lot of places, uh, you're gonna viruses and heat don't do well. Usually it's extreme heat. So, you know, we're heading into the curb where this thing could finally, you know, slow down and we could finally be okay to continue regular life. And if that if if that does happen, I expect WWE to be able to continue with SummerSlam at the garden or as they they think about moving it. Like I said, they've talked about Southern Florida, they've talked about uh Georgia, which will probably be Atlanta at the State Farm Arena. Um, I've also maybe heard rumors that they could just move it to September, which would be interesting, having SummerSlam move to September, that would back up your pay-per-view, uh, that would you have in September, which usually I think is, last year was the Clash of Champions, and I think the year before was, uh, Hell in a Cell, so, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what happens, I hope they can keep it in Boston, but, you know, this, this virus situation changes almost daily so and uh you know people are you know governments and city and officials are changing and making new rules or wanting to change different things i mean uh the city of los angeles could be making something that affects wrestlemania next year at sofi stadium um so wwe either not in the envious position where you know they're always booked into going into arenas almost every day of the week and now all these arenas are closed, you have no house shows, and you know, you're doing everything for the performance center, and then you wanna try to plan ahead, so like that when the arenas open back up and you can have crowds again, you wanna be ahead of the curb. Uh, same thing with AEW. I know AEW, before the pandemic, they postponed a lot of shows, like the Rochester, Milwaukee, St. Louis, uh, New Orleans, 
uh, a lot of shows that they had just announced. Uh, I know Vegas, they've all postponed. Double or Nothing this year was supposed to be in Vegas. They postponed it to next year being in Vegas as well. I got a feeling Double or Nothing is just always going to be in Vegas no matter what. But they, you know, they postponed it and etc. So it does make me uh, feel like WWE is a little bit in a harder situation coming to planning wise. I think AEW is going to stay in Jacksonville, considering that they own the building that they're in. Well, Tony Khan's father, Shad, Shad Khan, owns the building. Uh, I think he owns TIA Bank Field and he owns Daly's Place, and they're right next door. So you know it's definitely gonna be interesting, and uh, you know the UFC is another thing that's gonna have to you know be ready to plan and move ahead with this. So it's definitely an interesting situation in the world. Uh, listen, I appreciate wrestling staying. I appreciate having the opportunity to be entertained by wrestling during this time. But uh, as much as I would usually shit on crowds like you know Chicago or Los Angeles or New York. Or Toronto for being like so smarky or mark crowds. Hell, I even miss those for fuck's sake. So, anyways, you know, leave your thoughts down below. Tell me what you think. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. And uh, thank you again for the support for all the new subscribers. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching the Rafa Duke Page Guide channel. Uh, hopefully, there'll be more wrestling content coming your way in the next few days or weeks. I'll try to see if I can keep a regular tempo. I have no idea when work's going to restart for me as well, so I'm going to have to factor that in as well. So, thank you for watching. Have yourselves a very good day and stay safe.